Hallelujah. Amen. There is none besides Him. Right. My, my, my. I feel good today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In my spirit. Amen. All right. And it's just bubbling over. My, my, my. I just feel good. Thank you. Look over at your neighbor and say, I feel good. Oh, I feel Amen. good. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother uh, Lucian Redlett, is he the one you sang that song, Mom? I feel good, good, good. I feel wonderful, wonderful good. Every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. If you have your Bible with you today, turn to 2 Timothy, the first chapter. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. I am so thankful for my mother today. Amen. And I'll talk more about that as we get into the sermon. But there's no way that I could tell you the gratitude that I have for my mom and how thankful I am to the Lord that she is still with us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And not just with us, but she's out and about and serving the Lord and so Amen. thankful for yeah. that. God has certainly been good Amen. to us. In times past, I have uh, read you some words to a song, and I want to do that before we get into our scripture today which is 2 Timothy, the first chapter. Today we're going to talk about the influence that we have on others, and of course we're going to emphasize a little bit more on the mothers than we are anyone else since it's Mother's Day, but this pertains to all of us. And uh, before we get into what Paul talks to Timothy about and what he writes to Timothy here, I want to read you the words of a song. I'm not sure who wrote it, but you'll recognize it when I read the the uh, lyrics because I've told them to you before. Grandfather smoked and had a taste for booze, and the next thing you know, granddaddy's son did too. And when that boy had children of his own, addiction was the only seed he'd sown. He had a special name for every man, for anyone that wasn't just like him. His children use the words they heard from dad. Yeah. If they're not just like we are, we don't like that. What in the world is that? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody's weed eating, and we ain't even got no yard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, God bless them. Whatever they call them. Yeah. Needs a muffin. Come. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that second verse again. Okay. Amen. He had a special name for every man, for anyone that wasn't just like him. His children used the words they heard from dad. If they're not just like we are, we don't like that. So we see here in the verses, and I don't know who wrote this, but they were certainly inspired, whether they knew it or not. They were inspired of the Lord. Because just as surely as we reap what we sow, we plant seeds in our own life, but we plant seeds in the lives of others as well. Amen. We have an influence on other people. We pass things along. Right. Especially to those that are younger. Amen. Those that look up to you. John that looks up to Daddy Sleece. Amen. Mm -hmm. Tyler and Isaac that look up to Pappy back there. Amen. Right. And not just that, but other people. You have influence on people today. Right. Whether you think you do or not. You influence people today. Right. You have an influence on others. You plant seed into their life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And that's what we see with the words of this song. Granddaddy had a taste for booze and he smoked and he passed that on to his son. He saw him, his son saw him do it yeah. and he started doing it. Amen? Yeah. How many times you heard somebody say, heard a child say a word they shouldn't and they ask him, where did you hear that? And they say, I heard mama say it. Yeah. I heard daddy say it. And then this man passes it on to his children. And then it talks about a racist. Somebody who talks about other people that are not the same color. Or that calls people names that are not like him. I guess that he thinks he's perfect. You ever think about that, that, about that before? When you go running down somebody else, what do you think you are? Perfect? Amen? Somebody can comb over all of us and find faults, failures, and, and you know, disabilities, so to speak. Amen? Amen. But he passes that down to his children. Right. They use the words they heard from dad. Yeah. 
Yeah. If they're not just like we are, we don't like that. Amen? Come on. I heard the testimony not long ago of Johnny Lee Clary, who's a minister at Brother Swaggart's church. He became one of the higher ups in the Klu, in the Ku Klux Klan. Mm. He's not in it no longer. Yeah. His testimony is he went from burning the cross to preaching the cross. Mm. But he said his dad and passed those things on down to him. Yeah. That racism, mm. that hatred. So we pass things along today. Right. Just as a runner in a race passes the baton to the next runner, mm. and then that runner carries the baton the baton. Let's see what Paul said. Brother Billy, what in the world does that have to do with Paul and Timothy? Let's see what Paul says to Timothy here. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. We're going to start in the first verse. Paul, an, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. Now listen to what he says. Verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Now do you see a pattern here in the life of Timothy? We find out here not only that Timothy was a man of faith, but we find out that this same faith, this unfeigned faith, which means strong, it means unwavering, this unfeigned faith dwelt first in his grandmother Lois. And then his grandmother passed that down to her daughter, who was Eunice. And then Eunice passed that down to her son, who was Timothy. What are we talking about today? We're talking about passing something on. We're talking about planting seed in someone else's life. Mothers have the unique opportunity and the privilege and the honor that has been given to them to raise their children. To plant good things in their life. Things that will stay with them for the rest of their life. Things that they will not soon forget. Well, especially when they're that young, minds are so impressionable. They watch everything. They pick up on everything. Things you didn't even think they were listening. They heard. Amen? And I realize today that there are many people out there that are serving the Lord, that are ministers, that are in the church that didn't have that kind of legacy, didn't have that legacy of faith handed down to them. But Timothy was such a man that had had this in his family. His grandmother was a praying woman. She had faith. His mother was a praying woman. She had faith. She passed that on to Timothy. Now here he is, a minister of the Lord, and that same faith that dwelt in them now dwells in him. And Paul is confident of that. And in this scripture, he's reminding Timothy of that because he goes on to say that, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. What's he talking about? He's talking about the unfeigned faith that had been passed on. And like I said, I realize there are people that are saved today that didn't have this. But there are those of us today, because I'm like that today. I'm like Timothy today. Faith has been passed on to me. Faith has been instilled in me. Faith has been planted in me. Not by my father, because my father was an alcoholic, a drunk, a womanizer. But thank God, Mama said, Hey, me. <laughs> thank God I had a mama that God got a hold of. Amen. A mama that would then take that faith and plant it inside of her children. You plant seed today, mama, whether you realize it or not. You plant seed today, daddy, whether you realize it or not. All right. Timothy's grandmother had planted this seed in Timothy's mother, and Timothy's mother had planted this seed in Timothy's life as well. Come on. Timothy was one of those that the legacy of faith had been passed on. I am one of those today that the faith 
the legacy of faith had been has been planted and been passed on right. to me. Just as Timothy's was planted inside of him, just as his mother planted that inside of him, my mother planted it inside of me. The memories of the Bible studies that we would go to with Uncle Sam and Aunt Barb. The prayer meetings that we would go to. The church services that we would go to every time the doors opened. Brother Rodney can tell you about this. The prayer meetings that we would walk to in the snow. I think that may be one of the reasons it crawls all over me whenever a good church goer says, well, it's just prayer meeting. I don't think I'll go. When I was being raised up, it wasn't just prayer meeting. Amen? Come on. It was prayer meeting. Right. Get dressed. Come on, we're going. But mama, there's ice on the road. Get dressed. Come on, we're going. But mama, it's cold out there. Get dressed. Come on, we're going. Yeah. Amen? Come on. We walked to church in the snow. And we didn't live close to the church. <laughs> mm. Amen? So it's more than just prayer meeting. And these memories are more than just memories. They're seeds right. that have been planted in my life. And you do the same thing today, Mom. Mama, with your babies. You plant seeds in the lives of your children. Things that will never leave them. Oh, they'll try to get away from it. But it'll always, somewhere in the back of their mind, in the depths of their spirit, there it is. Can't get away from it. It's there. Amen? Amen. It's there. Hearing my mama pray at her bedside, that planted seed inside of me. And those things today are important to me because of the seed that was planted in my life. Church attendance is important to me today. Being faithful to the house of God is important to me today. Prayer is important to me today. Reading the Word of God is important to me today. If mama hadn't planted those seeds in me, I might be like one of those that just leave it on the pew. To save my seat. That the only time they open the Bible is whenever the preacher gets behind the pulpit and says, turn with me today. Amen? Come on. But that ain't the way it was whenever I was growing up. All right. When I was growing up, this was part of all. This, was, this wasn't just something we left at church. This was something we read at home. Right. This wasn't just something we read at church. This was something we read at home. Right. This wasn't just something we lived at church. This is something we tried to live at home. Amen? Right. Prayer wasn't something we just saw take place at church. Prayer was something we saw take place at Uncle Bobby's. And we saw it take place at home. And we saw it take place at other places we would go to. Prayer was important. Amen. And those seeds have been planted in my life. Amen. The faith has been passed on to me. Right. And we pass on things today. Right. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. From what? The way that he was trained. The things that he was taught. The seed that was planted. Right. The way that he was taught by mama and by daddy and by those that had the influence in his life doesn't have to be a mom. Brother Hinton was no blood relation to me. But there's never been a man that had more influence on my life or planted more seed in my life mm -hmm. probably than that man. Right. So you don't have to be blood related. Come on. It can be your neighbor that you're sowing into their ground. Right. You're planting seed. True. It can be your friends. Yeah. It can be your co-workers. Come on. And trust me, people's hearts are fertile ground. Yeah. That's why the enemy spends so much time sowing corrupt things in them. Right. You may be the one coming by and dropping that pure seed. Come on. That witness. Right. Sharing that faith. Come on. Amen. Now, just because you train up a child and you plant these things, it doesn't make it impossible for them to walk away. Come on. It doesn't make it impossible for them to live an ungodly life. That just means that that which you taught them will always be there. It will haunt, listen, it will, I know this from experience, it will haunt your mind. Amen? Right. The things that mama plants inside of you, the godly righteous things. Come on. If you go to hell, 
You will have to do that by kicking mama's prayers to the side and trampling them underfoot. If you go to hell, Brother Dave, you're going to have to work to get there. All right. Amen? Come on. It ain't going to be easy for you to miss it. Why? Because of the prayers of Mama Fentress. Amen? Yeah. Because of the life and the faith that she planted in Brother Dave and oh. Sister Sydney. Amen? Oh. Because of the faith that she had that she didn't let die with her. Amen. She passed it on to somebody else. Right. The, the title of this morning's sermon is Don't Let Your Faith Die With You. Pass it on with to somebody else. Let it live on long after your body's gone and long after you've gave, given up the last breath and you're in the ground. Let your faith and your influence, your godly influence, live on. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let your faith Die with you, Mama. Don't let your faith die with you, Daddy. Yeah. Share it. Plant it in the lives of your children. Come on, breathe. Now, if they go there, Brother Dave, if you miss it, you're going to have to work awful hard, son. Because right. you're going to have to push through all those prayers. Amen. You're going to have to walk over all of those prayers. Amen. Yeah. You're going to have to wade through that river of tears that Mama prayed on her knees. Amen. Asking God to keep you from missing it. Amen. You're going to have to work to get into hell. Amen. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. I didn't get crazy and wild, but as a teenager, I tried to walk away from the Lord. Yeah. Uh, my goodness. But something had a hold of me. Right. Amen. Come on. Mama's prayers, right. that seed had been planted inside of me. <laughs> Had built a fence around me that I just wasn't. I didn't want to put up enough. I didn't want to put forth enough effort to push through it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise because I, I couldn't shake it. Yeah. I couldn't get away from it. Come it on. was there. And you know what I'm talking about today. Come if on. you're out there and you've strayed from the faith and you've walked away from God, but your mama's prayers will they haunt your dreams, the, the the memories, the the seed of faith that was planted inside of you. You can't get away from it today. No matter how much you drink, it's still there. No matter how much dope you take, it's still there. No matter how much sin you try, it's still there. You can't get away from it. Hallelujah. Absolutely. You can't get away from it. I got news for you today. Even if you run and you miss it and you go to hell, Mama's prayers will haunt you there. Amen. Come on. You will remember, oh God, I wish I'd listened to Mama. I wish I would have listened to Mama when she told me about Jesus. I wish I'd have listened to Mama when she took me to church. I wish I'd have kept going to church. I wish I would have listened and realized how important the Word of God is because Mama knew. Amen. Amen. That's true. You ain't going to get away from it. That's right. You're not going to get away from it. Praise and listen to me. There ain't nobody more miserable than a sinner that has a praying mama. Right. Amen. Amen. Because you can't get away from it. Right. You can't shake it. Amen. You can't shake it. That's right. And Paul said to Timothy, when I, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned, uh -huh. the durable, the, the tough, the strong faith right. that is in thee, Amen. I'm reminded that it first was with your grandmother Lois and then with your mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded that now it is in you. Right. Hank Williams Jr. wrote a song years ago. And I know some of the lyrics, but I'm not going to give the devil no glory and tell them to you. But the name of the song was Family Tradition. Yeah. In which he spoke of his wor worldly lifestyle and his wild lifestyle and his drinking and his drugs and his booze. Mm -hmm. And when asked, why do you do these things? He said, it's a family tradition. Yeah. We could use some family, some righteous, holy family traditions today. Amen. Amen. Why do you go to church? Because mama did. Right. Why do you believe in Jesus? Because mama taught me about Jesus. Why do you read the Bible? Because mama did. Amen. Because mama passed that on to me. That faith she instilled in me. Amen. Listen to me, mama. Listen to me, daddy. Yeah. Just as you can plant your old bad habits, as we read in that song, you can also plant holiness and faith and righteousness in the lives of your children. And Paul's reminding Timothy here, he says, I put thee in remembrance. Mm -hmm. He says, Timothy, I want to remind you of that legacy. Of that legacy. If it's more important, I want to remind you of that unfeigned faith that has been passed down to you, All right. planted in you. Amen. I want to remind you today, if you're out there, and I know you are, 
We are heard in far too many places for this not to light on the ears of somebody that this hits right smack between the eyes. You've ran away from God. You've walked away from the biblical teachings that mama taught you in the old rocking chair. <laughs> the truths that you learned on mama's knee. Hallelujah. As you went to sleep, she rocked you in the rocker and sang, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Or, Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. I want to remind you today of that. I want to remind you of the faith that has been passed down. To you, that it's in there. That seed is in there. Oh, it may have got covered up by the things of the world. You may be too busy to realize it, but I want to remind you today. I hope the Holy Ghost stops you right where you're at and reminds you of Mama's faith. Amen. Reminds you of Mama's God. Right. Because, honey, I got news for you. Granny's God is still on the throne today. Amen. The God that brought Granny through is still the God that will bring you through today. The God that brought Mama through is the same God that will bring you through today. I realize we live in a more hip, more update generation, more technical, more knowledgeable sometimes. I think they're more stupid. Amen. But we're supposed to be more knowledgeable. Amen. I realize God is out of date. The old King James just don't fit anymore. Come on, preach. Oh, I got news for you. In man's way of thinking, yeah. you've hit it on the bullseye. Right. But in God's way of thinking, He said, I am the same yesterday, yeah. today, and forever. Yeah. I am the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. I am God, and besides me, there is no other. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall remain and shall not pass away. Come on, brother, preach. Hallelujah. That faith is still real today. Amen. It's the only hope you've got. Right. Amen. True. It's the only hope you've got. So Paul's reminding Timothy. Absolutely. And he's showing us how that this has been passed down. Yeah. And it's letting us know that we can pass these things down to our children, to others. Yeah. Amen. My goodness. The best thing that a mama can do is not to work 60 hours a week to make sure that they have things. Listen to me. Not to work all their time to make sure that they have good education. <clears throat> and I'm not doubting education. Education is great. But the best thing that a mother can do for her children is to teach them about Jesus. Amen. Let me ask you something. If you work your entire life and you make sure your children have the best clothes and the best, and the best shoes. You make sure they have the best home. You make sure they have the finest education. And they split hell wide open because you didn't train them up in the Word of God. What have you gained? That's right. What have you gained? What comfort can they take in hell when they say, Well, you know, I went to college. Yeah. I had a degree. Yeah. Amen. No, we get this thing turned around backwards. The most important thing today is how is your soul when it comes to your relationship with God? Right. Amen. This life is a vapor, and the sooner we realize that, the better off we will be. Exactly. When none of us are here forever. Absolutely. Nothing in this life matters except what you do for Him. Amen. Because there is an eternity. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh my goodness. The best thing a mother can do for her children and family is to let the humility of Christ flow in and through her. A Christian mother who has been taught of the Lord on how to apply the principles of the Word of God in raising her children and teaches them the difference between getting ahead in life and the important things of eternity. Right. That's the greatness of a mother. Amen. That's the greatness of a mother. True. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Right. Why? Because of her love. Because of the faith that she shared. Amen. Because of the seed that was planted right. inside of her. Yes, sir. Pastor D. Buffalo, and I know that's a funny name, but spoke about his mother and the way that he was raised. He said she made the time to teach him to pray, made sure that he had what he needed to learn about the Lord Jesus. 
He said she denied herself certain pleasures in order to have the time to train her children up in the Word of God. But when he grew up, as many had before, he walked away from the teachings and the Christian example of his mother. After being beaten to the point of unconsciousness, he found himself lying in a hospital bed in a juvenile hall in California, scared to death. It was at that time he remembered the teaching of his mother. The faith of his mother. And remember what I said a while ago, these are not just memories, these are seeds. Right. So he's laying there, beaten half to death. And that seed of faith is still inside of him. All right. That faith that mama passed on. Amen. If he hadn't have had that, he might have just laid there and died. Right. But it was there in that hospital room that he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. That he surrendered to the things that mama had taught him. And he's a pastor today. In one of his sermons, he says this. Mothers... Be sensitive to your children's needs and make the time to plant seeds that the Holy Spirit can use to lead your children to Jesus. Lay a foundation that will cause them to remember Jesus. Amen. The Word of God encourages parents today to tell their children, to teach their children the way of the Word of God. Joel 1 and 3 says, Tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. In other words, pass it on. Pass it on. Don't let it die with you. Amen. Don't let your faith die with you, but pass it on. Let it live on Amen. in the lives of others. Right. Amen. Come on. How long has Sister Martha been gone, Brother Dave? Five years. February 17th of this year. Five years. Yeah. But her faith lives, lives on. on. See, when they closed that old coffin and they put it in the ground, yeah. they didn't put her faith in there with her. Right. Amen. Her faith did not die with her. Her influence did not die with her. Amen. Brother Dave's here today because of her faith, because of her influence, because of her prayers. All right. Don't let your faith die with you today. Yes, Don't let the, the enemy convince you that you're too busy for God. The next time the enemy convinces you that you're too busy for church, Stop and think about your children. Yeah. The next time the enemy convinces you that you're just too busy for the things of God, stop and think about your children. Because one day, mama, you're going to be gone. The question is, what did you leave in your children? What did you plant in them? What influence did you have in their lives? Yes. Is that influence going to be a good influence or a bad influence? Amen. Some people can't think about their mama today without feeling pain. Because she wasn't a good mama. Right. Amen. Come on. So if you're that woman out there today and you feel that pain when you think about your mama, do you want your children to think that way about you? Oh, you need to teach them the ways of God. Yes, sir. And steal faith in them. Pass it on. Right. So we see clearly in Scripture today yes. on this Mother's Day mm -hmm. in the words of Paul to Timothy, Timothy's grandmother's faith had not died with her. She had passed it on to Timothy's mother. Right. And I don't know whether Timothy's mother was alive at the time, but if she was passed on, that Timothy's mother's faith had not died, more than likely she's gone, had not died in her, but she had passed it on to Timothy. Yeah. She had passed it on. Like a runner does a, bat a baton right. in a race. Amen. Here, you run with it. Come on. <sighs> God. Amen. Praise Here Lord. you run with it. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, help us to run with it. Amen. Oh, help us, Lord, not to lay down the old baton today, yeah. but help us take it up and run with it. Oh. oh, Lord, don't let our faith die with us today. Amen. Let it live on long after we're gone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. Don't let your faith die with you. Deuteronomy 6 and 6, and I'm getting ready to close. Deuteronomy 6 and 6 says, In these words, talking about the Word of God, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. You see, first you've got to get it before you can give it away. All right. Kind of hard to give something away if you don't own it. Amen. If it don't belong to you. That's right. They get you in jail. Amen. Yes, sir. So make sure it's in your heart. And then what does it say? Verse 7 says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. 
and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Come on. Watch you mean, Brother Billy, not just when you go to church. Talk with them. Right. Talk of them mm -hmm. when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Well, that'll preach today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Take the Word of God. Let it be your road map and your guide. Teach your children at home. Yeah. Teach your children as you walk along the way. Teach your children as you go through life. Don't wait till they get to church so they hear it from the preacher. Amen? Wow. Let them see God in mama and daddy. Amen? Wow. Don't let the only God they see be inside the church house walls. Amen? Wow. Let them see Jesus in you. Amen. Let them see Jesus in you. Yes, sir. If you do things you shouldn't do, ask God to help you to stop it. Right. Amen? Before you influence your children to do the same thing. If you say things you should not say, if you have to, do like Job, and the next time a cuss word gets ready to come out your mouth, put your hand over your mouth and say, Lord, help me to say something other than that. Come on, bro. Amen? Come on, preach. Don't plant that in your children's lives. Yes. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. Right. Amen? Come on. We need to take heed of what kind of seed we are sowing in the lives of others. Right. Are people better off because of us or are they worse off because of us? The Bible says here to take these words, let them be in your heart, teach them diligently unto your children. Talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. It says thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. In other words, in, in spiritual speaking, let it, let, it, uh, let it guide your actions. Come on. Let the work of your hands, don't, don't let it go against the Word of God. And there shall be as frontless between thine eyes. Let it light your way. Let it be the light of your, to your path. And they shall write them upon the post of thy house and upon, the, upon thy gates. Yeah. In other words, like the psalmist said, write them on the tables of your heart today. Right. Oh, David said, thy word have I hid in my heart right. that I might not sin against you. If we had more of his word hid in our heart, we might not have so much trouble with sin today. Amen. And I might not sin Absolutely. against you. Don't let your faith die with you. Exactly. Teach it to your children. Teach it to your children. Amen. Come on, preach. You see, the next generation, yeah. the next generation needs to know how to live more than they need to know how to make a living. Yeah. That's right. This won't tell you how to make a living today. It doesn't tell you how to live. Amen. It don't matter what kind of living you make, if you don't know how to live, it ain't going to do That's you no right, good. That's right, brother. Amen. I heard a preacher tell me one time, he said... <clears throat> He said, once I go into that office, I'm no longer a preacher. I'm a businessman. Mm. I walked away feeling sorry for that preacher. Powerful preacher. Preach good. Yeah. Made me wonder about him after that, though. Mm. Amen. All right. If you can separate things in your life from your walk with God, I would question my walk with God. Amen. Amen. That's true. If you can lie, scheme, and fool people into making deals. Yeah. and still go to church with a clean conscience, I'd find me somewhere and ask God to search my heart. Yeah. Amen? Amen, that's true. Because this ain't just some kind of little B12 shot we get on Sunday morning. This is a relationship. Amen? Amen? That's right. Preacher, that's hard. No wonder you ain't got no more people than you got. I know it. But he won't let me preach nothing else. Praise the Lord. Uh, they need to know how to live more than they need to know how to make Thank a living. Jesus. Is an important, as important as education is, it fades in comparison to what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. We should all take heed Absolutely. to that today. Exactly. Grandma, grandpa, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, friends, neighbors. Right. You are seed sowers. Come on. You are a seed sower today. Amen. And those seeds come up in other people's lives. Yeah. The good, the bad, the ugly. We're all teachers to some degree. Yes, sir. Sadly, the majority of the generation that we see today are being raised as a neglected generation. Come on. Physically and spiritually. Right. Physically and spiritually. 
Amen. Why? Because most adults are so self-centered, they don't even know where their children are at half the time. Right. We got so many adults that walk around numb on dope. And I'm talking about prescription dope. They don't even know where their kids are at half the time. Amen. Amen. True. Teach your children the Word of God. Yes. If, listen to me. <clears throat> you have a choice today, Mother. Daddy. As well, we all have this choice. We can choose to live a life of faith, Brother Sleeves. To live and to train up our children to be an example of the Word of God in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And see that that faith lives on. Or we can let that faith die with us and leave behind a faithless and perverse generation. All right. I told you this a while ago, but it bears repeating. I got ahead of my notes. The next time you think, Mama, Daddy, that you just won't go to church, stop and think about your children. Mm. The next time that you think it's just too much for me to be faithful to church and keep up with everything else, stop and think about your children. The next time you think that I want to have some fun, I want to sow some wild oats, I wish you'd stop and think about your children. Amen. God wants you today to get a bulldog grip on the altar and declare that if they walk away from God, if they live a life of sin and miss heaven, they will do so only after they have trampled the faith that you planted in them underfoot. Yeah. If they miss heaven, it won't be because of your lack of effort. Because of it, it would be because of your, in spite of your efforts to keep them out. Amen. Amen. True. If they go to hell, it will be only after you have used your last ounce of strength to squeeze out a, a prayer with your last breath for yeah. God to save their soul. Come on. It would behoove every one of us to stand today as Joshua of old and say, I don't know who you're going to serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's important today to not let your faith die with you. Amen. It's important today to leave behind a godly legacy for your family. Right. Leave behind your legacy of faith. <coughs> Pass the baton of faith on to your children. Don't let your faith die with right. you. Amen. I'm so glad today that that faith has been passed on to me. Amen. And with every ounce of strength in me, I, I, I endeavor to pass it on before yeah. I leave this life. Amen. I want to be a godly influence. Yeah. I'm not perfect. I fail and I fall and I've scraped my knees and I've busted my nose. But I intend to hold on to Jesus Amen. and to share Him That's right. in any way that I can. That should be all of our goal today. Yes, sir. Be the light that we're supposed to be. Don't let our faith die That's right. with us. Amen. Someone else this morning have something before we go.